Welcome to the Channels Book Club. Channels Television is organizing the Channels Book Club Prize for Literature, Teenagers Episode, a national book review and essay competition for teenagers in Nigerian secondary schools. This is being done with the support of three organizations committed to promoting education and learning in Nigeria. Lufthansa German Airline, the largest airline in Europe, Latana Books, one of the most successful bookshop brands in Nigeria, and Goethe Institute, the cultural institute of the Federal Republic of Germany with a global reach. The best 10 will be shortlisted by an independent panel of judges. Yona Oyegun Masade, COO and Managing Editor of Kachifu Limited, Silva Inze Ifedigbo, author of The Funeral Did Not End, Adirin Le Shonariwo, who is the director of Modern Day School of Arts. The winner of this essay competition will earn a sponsored trip to the 2013 Frankfurt Book Fair, taking place in Frankfurt, Germany. The Frankfurt Book Fair dates back to 500 years and is the biggest book fair in the world with over 7,000 exhibitors from over 100 different countries. The first runners up will be sponsored to the Ake Arts and Book Festival, which is billed to be the biggest of its type in Africa, while the second runners up will get a library of books. The schools of each student will get special mentions and recognitions. So, if you are between 13 and 19 years old, and you are a student of any Nigerian secondary school, you can participate in this essay competition and earn yourself a trip to Frankfurt, Germany. What you need to do is to get yourself a copy of Chinua Achebe's Things Fall Apart, read it, and write an essay not more than 1,000 words. For more information, visit www.channelstv.com slash home slash guidelines. We'll be back with the rest of the program after this break. Andrew Isemokumo Oki is a young and brilliant author of the novel titled Bonfires of the Gods, which was shortlisted as one of the best five in 2012 by the Lagos Book and Art Festival. Andrew was recently invited by Africa Writes, a festival of African literature organized by the Royal African Society in partnership with the British Library in the UK to formally present his book and conduct a book reading session for the UK society. He shared that experience, his book, and views on creative writing in Nigeria. Where were the noisy neighbors hyperactive children when she needed them to cause some ruckus that would deliver her from the hands of such venomous silence? Where were the kids from across the hallway that would come to her door and knock and then run away just as she answered the door? Where was Angelica, an illiterate prostitute and a tall evangelist neighbor who would invite her over and tell her the same old story of how the Lord had saved her soul one faithful day a thousand years ago. Andrew, it's nice to have you on the Channels Book Club. Thank you, Kunle, for having me. Um, your book, Bonfires of the Gods, it's doing well, I have to say, in many terms. So it was selected as one of the top five books at the Lagos Book and Art Festival last year. And you just got invited to attend the Last Africa Rights to launch your book in London. Um, what inspired you to write this book? Well, inspiration comes in different forms, in different ways. For me, it was more personal. Um, I grew up in, my, in Worry the city of Warren, Delta State. And um, in 97, when the Ijo Ishakiri ethnic clash happened, I was much younger. I was in secondary school, I was in boarding house. Then when I grew up, I felt the need to tell 
these many stories that are crying out to be told. You know, lives were lost, property was lost, and um, still, I didn't feel like the media had scratched the surface in terms of telling the stories. And so I decided to tell the human aspect of that event, or the series of events that happened in 97 in Worry. So I set about my research to tell the story. So it was busy. I was basically inspired to tell the story from a humanistic point of view because I felt that a lot of stories, a lot of lives, a lot of voices were crying out to be heard and it was time for me to tell these stories. Mm. I particularly found it interesting because I was in worry during the war in 97, 98, or 99, I can't remember well. And when I was reading your book, it was like I was reliving the events of, of those those years. It was really excruciating. It was, it was a tough experience. You know, what kind of reviews have you received on this book? And particularly from people who have read it, who were worried during that time, or those who were not even there but wanted to know about um, the events of those that particular period. The reviews have been very good. They've been very positive and Although it's hard for you to relieve a very sad time in your life, a lot of people who, have, who were there in Worry in 1997 have received emails from people like that who have commended me for telling the story as best as I could and as unbiased as I could possibly get because I myself am Ijo. And um, when I set out to tell the story, I didn't set out to point fingers or to, you know, set blames, you understand? So the reviews have been very, very good, and I'm very glad about it. The people feel that I have done a good job telling the stories because, you know, even the novel still hasn't scratched the surface. There are still so many stories, you know, so many. Although it's a general story, it's a general novel, so it's, a lot of stories will be similar to what's in the novel. But there are so many, so many people who are out there who have lots of stories, personal experiences that they would, they would have loved to share or that they would love to share. You know, that's once again, I do not want to um, open old wounds. Mm. And be beyond the war, yes. there's a mixture of romance and action and drama and, <laughs> and all that. T tell us a bit more, why, why did you tell that line? Well, I would say that I'm a very, very natural storyteller. I tell story the way I hear it in my head. I do not like embellishments. I'm not, I'm a very simple storyteller. I would write a story the way I would tell it to you with my mouth. And I have a lot of movie influence. You understand? I watch a lot of movies and the way the movies appeal to me, I try to represent it on paper whenever I write my books. So it's, it's a, you know, it's, <laughs> I have a, a very savvy way of presenting my characters and the events and my storytelling and the whole you know prose effect of, of, of the of the stories so that they could come together they could come out well and they could flesh out properly and then when my readers read it they actually feel that they are there I don't want a situation where my readers are reading my book accompanied with a dictionary is not how I tell stories very simple very subtle at the end of the day, you get the story and you get the message. You, you just returned from London to attend the Africa Rights e e event where you presented your book. That must have been a very exciting experience. Tell us about it. Oh my God, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. I've had yet. I was, um, I had the, the honor of meeting Ngugi Wathyonga, the author of Weep Not Child, and um, so many other great authors like you know, Violet Bulawayo. I met Doreen Baigana, I met uh, Chibundu Anuzo. Um, um, being a Vanga Wainana, I couldn't make it, it was ill. And uh, I met a lot of great established authors, emerging authors, publishers, editors, agents. It was a wonderful experience for me, you know, for me to stand out there and tell the story of worry and people ask me, so there's a place called Worry, so that really happened? How come the story hasn't been told? When we've heard of half of the other song, how come we've never heard of experiences like this? We only think there was only one 
genocide that happened in Nigeria, you know, in terms of Biafra. These kind of things happen. So it's, it's good that the story is going out there. It's good that people are knowing that, yes, healing may have taken place, but this and this is what people have to go through to get to where they are today. So um, you did a public presentation. Yes, what, was it, what was it like, the, the presentation itself? <laughs> it, was, it was okay. I had, you know, the chair of the panel was um, Abubakar Adam Ibrahim, who himself was a um, King Prize shortlist. And he's my friend, so it was very, very subtle and very personal. It was like a conversation in front of, you know, the crowd. And he asked me questions I read from the book and I answered the questions from the audience. It was very, it was very natural and very lovely. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, tell us, what is it like to birth a book and then see it over time become something that opens doors and creates opportunities for you and helps you to meet new people and have new experiences? What's the whole experience like? Well, I would say that I'm very, very honored. Um, you know, I studied literature in university and there's something called omniscient narrators. And I'm a Christian, I believe that God is the only Alpha and Omega, the only omniscient being. And now for you to put yourself in that position of omniscience, to tell a story, to give life to characters, to breathe in life to characters, it's, it's a big deal. And when you get it wrong, you get it wrong. When you get it right, you get it right. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't blame critics for being so brutal whenever they criticize certain works of you know, literature because they expect you to get it right. They are depending on you to bring life, to breathe in life into these characters, to, feel, to feed the minds of people with as many stories as you, as you can tell. Like I, I, I believe strongly that no one else can tell your story as well as you can. Not everybody are writers, but everybody can tell stories. If you can go out there and find these people who have stories to be told and tell it on their behalf, it's also a very, very big privilege. And I'm, 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 I'm very big on research. Every book that I write or I intend to write, I research very, very, largely before I start writing or before I set out. Research is like 80% and the writing is about 20% or if not 90, 10. You know, so it's, it's, it's scary. It gets very scary sometimes, you know, because whenever I write, I go very, I go into my characters. I go into the world that, I, that I'm trying to create. You know, sometimes it gets, from writing about a scary part, it gets really scary for me. I'm writing about a very emotional part, I get really emotional, so. You talked about the research you put into your books. I know you might not, you might be a bit reluctant to talk about this, but I'm going to draw you out. <laughs> I know your next book, okay. you're doing some, or you did some kind of research in India. You had to go to India to um, get into the characters uh, and some other events in your next book. What, can you tell us a bit about that? It was a very wonderful experience, but at a point it got really depressing. My next book, I don't want to give out spoilers or say so much about it, but my next book is about Africans who live in the Indian subcontinent, Africans who go through struggles in a faraway land, Africans who are trying to live free from trouble, and Africans who are living in trouble. Now, in the process of my research, I was able to get seven days to interview prisoners, Nigerian prisoners, in the Arthur Road Jail in Mumbai. And at first I thought I was going to be giving one prisoner to interview for seven days. When I got there, I was giving one person for each day. And, and I wouldn't know who I would interview the next day. And every day presented a different story. Every day presented a different experience from these prisoners. And every day, I don't know if they planned it, but every day, they would give me crypt, you know, cryptic messages. Yeah, my name is just, just uh, you know, tell my father I'm here and all that. You know, and then the and then the prison warders were like, what is he saying? What is he saying? You know, we understand pigeon, don't speak any no pigeon here. You know, speak it in English. You know, so 
I was I, I was I was in the office of the Indian ambassador and I told her about my experience in India and she was very impressed because she also feels that she's a crusader for international relations and diplomacy between Nigeria and India. And so I'm not, I don't want to get political but basically this that's how yeah, it was a very, very personal, a very it was a very tough research, it was very tough. Dayo Oladele Lori is a talented creative writer and the author of Cruel Passion. Dayo is a Nigerian lady with an incredible appetite for creative writing. She resides in Cameroon, but found time to join us to discuss her book and life. Don't go away. Adeyemi, while studying in the United States, played a fast one on an innocent girl. It was pleased he got himself unhooked when he became seated of her thereafter. It, however, will not have it that simple. Welcome to the Channel Book Club. Thank you. How did you get into creative writing? Well, creative writing has always been a passion that I've nursed from when I was young. So, I mean, I started writing poems at an early age, and uh, with time, by the time I finished my secondary school, I was already, you know, writing so many things. I started with letters to friends. I would write long letters and they would always call them epistles. So naturally, at some point, I felt, you know, I had so much to tell a story. So I decided on creating. I'm guessing that must have been born out of a lot of reading when you were very young. Yes, I read a lot because I'm lucky to have parents who had so many books. I mean, we got books as gifts before any other thing. So we had a very rich library, which we could read from. So from time to time, I read so many, you know, books, even books that were maybe a little above my age at that time because they were available to me. So that also sharpened my creative skills and helped my imagination and gave back to who I am today. What did you first attempt to write? Can you remember? I think it's a poem. It's a poem, and that would be in my uh, lower secondary school, maybe GS3, I think. I think it was a poem, but I don't think I can quite remember the title now. <laughs> okay, that's, that's fair enough. Um, Cruel Passion, tell us about this book. Well, Cruel Passion, it's a... Uh, the main, main theme of Cruel Passion is rape. It's actually about a young girl, you know, that's the Fiolua, who uh, will see every, the young girl we see every day who are not exposed to the realities of life, caged in her father's house, not exposed. She's not mixing up. So she's not expressing her age. You know, at certain age, children are expected to demonstrate some prowess, you know, challenge, uh, adult, adult advice in a way, I mean, I mean in a very uh, creative way anyway. But she wasn't given that opportunity. She was a typical girl caged, cocooned by her father. The fear of her father was the beginning of wisdom. So that affected the way she viewed life. And then like we would say, every girl should be able to read in between the lines. She couldn't read in between the lines when she needed to. And then going away from the main character, who is the fair, we'll go to Bankole, who is also one of the main characters. He stood for the typical boy who lacked a father figure. You know, raised by uh, a mother who was married to a foreigner, a foreigner who couldn't stand his African you know, background. He was sent home, eventually raised by a grandmother who couldn't relate to that teenage, you know, the teenage years that he was expressing. So eventually he got carried away by friends' advice, took his, you know, his alter ego from older boys who introduced them to smoking, early dating, you know, which was, you know, a bit out of order. And then we see Ruby born out of the two dysfunctional characters. You know, coming from a mother who told her that, look, you must never trust any man. 
So uh, it's uh, an interwoven story of, you know, love, hatred, uh, abomination. And eventually you see fates playing out, you know, in very dangerous manner. Mm. What inspired it? Sounds very interesting. Well, I would say one major inspiration was my own experience in the boarding house. You know, you see a lot of characters in the boarding school. Children who, for the first time, are a bit free and then they go overboard. So I think that was a bit of an inspiration for me. You know, when I was writing, every time I reflect back to those, um, when I was writing the, the younger, you know, ages of the character, that helped me a bit to understand how teenagers function and then to their adulthood. Are you the classical ent entertainer writer or the activist writer? No, I would say I'm more of an entertainer. I would say I'm more of an entertainer because, uh, well, I've not done anything, wrote anything political, for instance, and in every of my work that I have in the pipeline, you know, nothing in that. So I'm the typical entertainer, let me put that in there. It's a book, you, I, if I write any book, I want you to be able to pick it up and learn some, you know, some values. Let me put that way, yeah. What's the central theme you're trying to drive um, with Cruel Passion? Yes, the central theme is, uh, I wouldn't say it's one, but I would take it from majorly parenting is one thing that came to mind when I was writing it. You know, the, the, the kind of, <laughs> most of our children have, don't have their parents anymore. The TV, the house helps, you know, are their parents and their mates who are, actually do not know better than they are. So I think for me, this book helps, if a parent picks it up, it helps them to see, you know, that divide that is present between young growing children, teenagers now, and then the way adults perceive them. A lot of times they are off, you travel. Like, like uh, uh, um, Ife's father was always traveling. So she never had that advice of, you know, that interaction with her father. So, but her mother who was also at home was the laid back kind of mother. You know, she's just there, not so observant, you know. So it helps for us to say, oh, Parenting has to be detailed. And then in teaching the children, you know, the young ones that are growing up, we need to imbibe a lot of values, a lot of confidence in them. You need to tell them the truth about life. We don't need to shield them away from the realities. Yes. Mm. Is that the reason why um, organ an organization like Unif UNICEF will say, let's give a few copies of this to people and all that, the, the parenting theme? I believe, I believe it's part of it and the fact that it's dealing with, you know, this, this book has been labeled 14 plus, so, and up to adulthood. I mean, the, 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 life, the, the character's life actually started from about the age of, say, 14, 15, and it went on and on into adulthood. So it's a book that a parent will pick and still enjoy. Wonderfully, yes. Tell us, how far has the book gone? I mean, ha have you received a lot of yes. feedback and, and, and so on? Yes, a lot of feedback. I mean, one of the greatest feedback that has been constant is the fact that when people read it, people tell me, oh, I couldn't sleep throughout the night. I had to just make sure I completed. And truly, that brings a smile to my face that, OK, yes, this book is engaging because when you write, it has to be engaging for people to be, I mean, when you pick a book, you must want to see the last, last page. So that brings smiles to my face. All right, can you please read um, something from Crawl Passion for our viewers? Okay. If I looked around to find Bankoli standing afar off and watching with no concern, she opened her mouth to scream but felt a piece of dirty rag stuffed into her mouth. The sting filled her nose rails, choking her. She struggled to pull away, but the fight was one-sided. As several slaps landed on her face, forcing her to be quiet. She wiggled her body as they pushed her to the ground, but they were too strong for her. She could hear their voices as they spoke, but the sound was too low for her to make out what they were saying. 
She whimpered through the rag in her mouth, trying to plead with them, but they continued with what they were doing. A light blazed into her eyes, and a choking smell filled her nostril. The burning ember illuminated Van Collie's face, casting several long, indistinctive shadows, and she couldn't mistake the, his height and broad shoulders for anyone else. Great. Our two books of the week are Cruel Passion by Dayo Oladele Lori and Bonfires of the Gods by Andrew Oki. Please get yourself copies, read them, and let us know what you think. From one nation to another, there must be a meeting point. Their ideas may be different, but they must work to agree on what's best for the people. Diplomatic Channel untangles the discussions to bring out what's really important. Because it is our world, and it's our right to know how their decisions affect us. As always, we'll be happy to have you on any of our social media platforms displayed on your screen. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Ola Kunle Kasumo. Remember, one great book can change your life. Bye-bye.